All and right. we're here. We're back. Actually, you're a little backlit. Oh shit! Fuck God. You're dark. Damn. What about this? There you go. That's uh, better. Now you look. It looks like Jesus is coming out of the toilet. <laughs> God damn it! Yeah, I know. No, that's good. It's good. Don't move. Fuck it. Let's good. go. It's good. That's great. Yeah. It's fantastic. We're the worst podcast there is of all time. Yeah, yeah. it's. Uh... <laughs> we're working. Did you talk to the guy about a studio? I, I want to talk to Shelby. I got to talk to Shelby. We're going to use your no, wife. Talk to the studio, the guy, the studio. I thought we oh, used your wife. House. We're kicking her out and using her studio. And she's oh, yeah, we could do that, too. Yeah, you know. Well, I'll talk to Shelby. I got away with Shelby. I know Shelby. I mean, I don't even know him. So you talk to him. Yeah, because this is I mean, I've, I've uh, yeah, I've never talked to I, every person I've ever done. Who's done a podcast has always put it out on time. I think we're the only one besides Sam Harris or whatever the stories you tell are. No, plenty um, of people. Play people do it's the problem is our visuals. We're doing Zoom, our audio, our we're faces doing Zoom stuff. when you're like right below me. I mean, that's what's insane. You're literally yeah, we're in the right same. below me, and sometimes the Wi Fi is bad. And I could literally, we could literally just film it in the same room. That's what's insane. Yeah, well, what's insane is we did film it in the same room one time and you lost the episode somehow. No, I, I uh, you gotta go shut the bathroom door. All go right, shut gosh. the bathroom door. <laughs> Gee whiz. This is embarrassing, folks. I'm sorry. I, I apologize. Just the bathroom. I can I can literally hear him upstairs. It's funny. I can hear you closing the door. I think our podcast is somehow getting worse in quality as we move on. <laughs> it's, it's bad. Gonna... Well, at the beginning, it was pandemic. It made sense. But and you lived in fucking uh, Brooklyn. Oh, yeah. And then it's like the pandemic's been over for like a year. And we're still <laughs> we're still zooming you, it. Um, some people you can't say that in front of, by the way, I tweeted at Starbucks, not thinking it was like a public tweet. I just thought like, oh, yeah, I'll just tweet at Starbucks because the, these goddamn mobile orders ruined uh, the, the, the business. I saw that. And I was yeah. like, I was like, hey, pandemic's over enough with the mobile. And people were like, it's fucking very not over. You piece of shit. And I was like, I'm well, oh, he, sorry. Here's the thing. It's more dangerous to get the flu at this point. So I think at oh, that God. point, go fuck yourself in the ass, right? I mean, like, if it's more dangerous to get the flu. <laughs> yeah, I mean, is I mean, is that do we have backup stats on this flu thing? Because I don't want people to think we're. Uh, you I mean, know, that's what my brother Nazis. told me. He's pretty knowledgeable, you know. He's, I mean, I didn't, he's Jewish, I assume yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I didn't research, you know. I just, you know, you know how it is. You just. You take the fact and you share it without uh, doing any research because you like that's the facts. <laughs> the American way, baby. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, you don't want to have like the you sound like a, a right wing guy here, but uh, Nancy Pelosi got it and she's 148 years old and she was fine. Yeah, I'm, didn't even I'm, not, say. I'm not saying it's a hoax, but if you ever wanted evidence that it is a hoax, Nancy Pelosi not dying from it is pretty good evidence. Well, it's not a hoax. We got <laughs> vaccines. I got I got I seven know, vaccines up my ass. <laughs> No, but it is. It's it's not over. But like, here's the thing. At a certain point, the Republican Laza fair, whatever fucking, you know, reaction becomes correct. At yes. a certain point, And we I think we got to that. point. It wasn't there in the beginning when they were like, let's party on day one when everyone's like dying in the streets. But like now it's like, all right, it kind of is the flu. Like it, it, yeah. they, their their view became correct on some level. And then and. And also, I'm just, dude, I'm just tired. Like pe when people complain and say it's 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 like it's not over yet. I'm like, you might be right, but also shut up and die. I'm just done. No, yeah, I'm like, I'm loving the flights. I'm, I'm, I'm flying and I'm, I'm, I'm Ubering, no mask, the whole thing. But nobody wants to hear about COVID. They want to hear about <laughs> this fucking whack job goofball movie. And I, I think we're going to upset some people here. I, I can already feel. I thought it was like I'm, your favorite I'm, movie. Like you hadn't seen it since you were four or something, which is bad parenting. But, you know, I'm, I'm undecided on this movie. I don't know what to think. I, I watched it. I started watching it again today. I couldn't get through it. it. It This movie might be in my category of Clockwork Orange. Very similar to me in that I'm like, OK, it's brilliant. He's a genius. It's one of the best movies of all time. I can't get through it. I mean, <coughs> I gotta have a cough. I've been saying COVID's not real, and now I'm like fucking coughing. Now. <laughs> I think I may have got it again. I mean, here's the thing: it's like, uh, it's so not my cup of tea. It's not even a tea. <laughs> it's, it's 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 like, I mean, like it is. It's not even a tea. It's like a, a frappe. I I don't enjoy, and it's good. Like for people who like frappes, I'm like, it is the best. What what's frappe? You mean frap? A frap. It's not frappe. I feel like it's probably frappe. 
No frap is uh, only people in Boston say frap and they're still well, not saying frap. Whatever the way the Boston people say it is incorrect always. So that's <laughs> that's what I base it on. I know. Well, I've never heard it frappe, though. I mean, it's a frappe. Maybe it's just frap. All right. Whatever. Well, we say <laughs> frap and you don't even say anything. So I, I don't know what you're talking about. All right. Maybe it's frap. Well, either way, that's well, that's how much it's not my cup of frap. I don't even know how to fucking pronounce it. <laughs> I'll cut the frap. <laughs> <laughs> It is so just not my cup of tea. And that and that's not a criticism. Like, it's just, it's, Same. It's, it's not a criticism. I think it is really interesting. And he is clearly an auteur. And he's clearly a visionary. He's and he's autistic. Clearly, <laughs> but it's like, I guess, like, for me, you know, I think you're the same way. We like real shit that makes sense. And this is like a dream. And it's very enigmatic. And it's very abstract. And, like, um, it's just not how i like things but i do think uh, it's good i'm the same way so I, it's similar to what i have to do with like sopranos but different i actually think this is much better than the sopranos but Incredible. it's this thing of like i have to just say listen i don't like the media you're right yes. i'm wrong i'm stupid i don't like tv for a variety of reasons one of them being it stinks yeah and it's just silly so i'm sure this movie is great and there, there's a lot i like about the movie so let, we'll, we'll go through the whole thing here the first 40 minutes of this movie, I'm like, this is my favorite movie yeah. I've ever seen. I, I love of, it. I kind and of feel, the, feel, feel the same way. Yeah. The, the problem is I, it's me. I suck. I want to be a guy that loves this movie. I want to be a guy that's like, you don't get it, man. I see the genius. It's interpretive. It's fucking fantastical. But, it's amazing. <clears throat> but I don't are, get it. You are onto something there, I think, because the first 40 minutes are him kind of investigating the thing. And it's really interesting. And there is a plot. But at a certain point in the movie, this is the kind of movie that obviously the plot doesn't matter. But eventually that catches up with you in the movie. Like eventually, I get that the plot doesn't matter, but you're still having to watch the plot. <laughs> so it gets like kind of boring after 40 minutes. You're like, because it is awesome when he's going through the closet. And I mean, one of the best lines ever when she's like, are you a detective or a pervert? I mean, that's an amazing line that all that shit's awesome. That kind of going down the rabbit hole, you know, looking at these sexual perversions. But then I, and, and this is another issue I have. And I think it's, I think it's right at 40 minutes. Dennis Hopper comes in. And here's the thing about Dennis yes. Hopper. Yes. He yes. sucks. He's always yes. sucks. He has That's one, what I want to say. He has one note. He just does it over and over and over again. And if this movie had a cool psychopath, it would be great. But he sucks. He's always sucked. He was never good. Everyone was just on ecstasy and speed in the 60s. So they, they hallucinated that he had talent. He sucks. He's always sucked. And he fucking sucks at this. OK, so th this is exactly how I feel. And I have this literally written in my phone. I'm yeah. like, I love every minute until Dennis Hopper comes. And right underneath that, it says, is Dennis Hopper good? Question <laughs> mark. <laughs> no. I took a screenshot that I was going to send you, but I wanted to just save everything. Like, look at this. I mean, is this can we get can we get this? Is this good <laughs> acting? <laughs> this is the character. <laughs> this is the main guy. He looks like he's kidding. It looks like he's just kidding. Like he's like, oh, he is just, it's its like, and I, I mean, obviously like, see, this is why it's a hard movie to analyze though, because it's like bad acting is part of it, you know? Uh-huh. <laughs> whoa, whoa. He is just like, you know what it is? It's just, well, here's the thing. Like, it's just not scary. Yes. You know who's, uh, you know who's scary in this movie? Fucking Dean Stockwell. Dean which Stockwell. one's he? The big fat Kevin Brennan guy? No, he's the uh, the gay guy who's sleepy, who sings the clown man. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the guy in in the, the Untouchables. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who know. says nice house? I said nice house. That guy's like the creepiest fucking guy ever. Wait, is he in Untouchables? That might be someone else, actually. Is that the same guy? Who's the guy that lip syncs to Roy Orbison? That's Dean Stockwell. Yeah, but I think in the are you talking about the guy who kills Sean Connery in the Untouchables? Isn't that the same guy? I think it might be a different guy. We I got to look this up. I thought for sure that was him. Dean Stockwell is in Quantum Leap. Remember that show? You're in Quantum Leap. <laughs> um, I don't know. I <laughs> no, I never watched that show. I hate TV. <laughs> but yeah, that guy's fucking creepy. Yeah, he's but, creepy. He's a better bad guy. Like, My father's gay. I feel like Dennis Hopper's like like breaking the, fr the, the first rule of Vegas Psycho, which is that he's just yelling the whole time. Dean Stockwell died last year. Did you know that? Oh, I did not know that. How about really? that? 
So that he's not the guy from the fugitive. No, they look so. I mean, the untouchables, he looks so similar. I know, but it's not that guy. Oh, I want it to be that guy, though. Well, it, it ain't. Uh, he looks like the guy in this movie, Dean Stockwell. He reminded me of um, what do you call it? Fucking um, uh, Kenny Rogerson, who nobody knows. Sorry, I'm derailing this by looking this guy up. <laughs> Anyways, that guy is great. I agree. He's fucking weird he's and creepy, fun and creepy. And he's like sleepy. He's like falls asleep at. at it's just, it, so when he punches Kyle McLaughlin, it's really scary because the guy looks like he's like narcoleptic, like he's barely like moving. And then he punches Kyle McLaughlin in the stomach. And I'm like, that's creepy. But Dennis Hopper. It's there's he has no range. It's just the same note over and over and over again. And it's just like clearly like, I don't know. I hate it. I fucking hate Dennis Hopper. I do, too. I hate him in this. And the best thing he's in is in Apocalypse Now. And when you watch Hearts of Darkness, you see and hear that, like, he's just that guy. He's just all he, fucked up. He's like, I don't understand what you're talking about. I don't know any of my lines. And so he's just being himself. He's literally like yelling like, I'm an American. It, it <laughs> like takes, he's not even acting. It takes me out of it because it's like he's just a crazy narcissist who just like goes crazy and is on drugs. And then he just does that in movies. And I, I, I'm like, that is just Dennis Hopper. And it, it, in a way, it's like, I know it's good to bring yourself to the movie, but he brings himself into the role in a way that's like, I just find him annoying. Well, so 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 backtrack. I feel I feel exactly the same way. I actually I really do, and we're gonna get so much shit. Like a lot of people are like, finally, this is a masterpiece. This is the best movie, and I do think it's a good movie. I think a lot of it I don't understand, and some of it is just unpleasant. It's similar to yeah. Apocalypse Now. I do see the brilliance in both movies. I just they're so unpleasant, and I don't mean just like like I, Schindler's List is one of my favorite movies ever. So I don't just mean like the content, just the weirdness, the scene where the woman's like dancing yeah. while they're like beating the fuck out of it. And, There's a couple and, of moments you're like, why did someone make this? <laughs> yeah, it's just upsetting. And that's what he is. He's a provocateur, I yeah. guess. And he, it's supposed to be upsetting. Um, but the, the beginning, I'm a Hitchcock guy. I'm on a Hitchcock kick. It's like we're watching a Hitchcock movie. It's like a better yeah. modern Hitchcock movie. The whole thing of like she honks and the toilets flushing. And this is me. I'm a basic bitch. I yeah. like I'm going to signal you when trouble's coming. He flushes the toilet so he can't hear it. He has to hide in the closet. He sees this crazy shit. He's almost discovered. He is discovered that shit. I'm like, this is fucking killer. Yes. And then Dennis Harper comes in and just starts like screaming. It's just know, nonsense. And you wish you wished we had like a Benicio del Toro or Javier Bardem, Bardem these great Bardem, actors. I know. Yeah. Someone like that who can really be like unsettling. By the way, I, I forgot. I didn't realize like Little Shop of Horrors totally just stole this kind of. Have you ever seen Little Shop of Horrors? I don't know that movie that well. I, I had it. It was we had a VHS that was Gremlins and Little Shop of Horrors, and I never watched well, either because Steve I'm Martin of is like a sadistic dentist who's like beating the girl the main guy's in love with, but he also has like a nitrous oxide mask he's always using. So it's just like oh. a total like steal. Yeah, the beginning's great. It's like it shows this picturesque town, but there's this creepiness underneath, you know, in the in the grass. And it has like a suspenseful feel. Everyone's a little off. It captures that. I mean, that's what the movie I think people relate to his movies because like you you know, it's this feeling of a picture perfect town, but everyone just something's weird going on with everyone. You don't know. Right. You know what I mean? So right. it captures that really well. That repression and everyone, you know, when he goes to the detective, the detective's like just, well, let's go look at this ear, son. It's like funny and weird. Yes. And um, it's full of phallic symbols, like like a like a it has like the kind of like everything is shaped like a dick in this movie. I feel like in every scene, uh, like a porno, it, it almost feels like a weird porno at times, you know, like when mm -hmm. he comes in as the pest control. Um, but uh, but yeah, I guess you have this mystery. And the problem is the mystery is revealed as Dennis Hopper. <laughs> right and you, it's like you saw the magic act and then you're like ah it, it just it just i just wish it was someone else i just don't and he kind of needs to carry the movie at that point yeah yeah i just i i just i, I like i said i can't i don't enjoy when he's on camera i don't think I he's good i think he's like silly he's doing these like big eyes and just like yelling it's and i think scary. People... he's trying to be a psycho yeah, I think people think this is a great performance and I think that they're wrong, but it's subjective. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know, but I just don't love it. But there are things I love. And Laura Dern, who I don't particularly like, I think this is her best role. This is when she's like she became like Dennis Hopper in my mind. I mean, it's big and silly. Great. Why do you not like her? I feel like it's just because of her feminist quips in Jurassic Park. 
No, she becomes big. Don't you think she's big and silly and over the top now in the last 20 years? I think she does. She's good in way. Jurassic Park, I think. Ish. Um, you don't like her in Citizen Ruth? That's early. I'm, I said the last 20 years. That's early. Yeah, I guess I don't know. Um, I'm talking these big things like the, the TV show that I tried watching. Enlightened? No, no. Whatever the fuck it was called. Women, the women fight the guy. It's Nicole Kidman and Laura Dern oh, and Reese Witherspoon. She's lives. just bit. She's just yeah. the, she's the worst she's one. She's very manic, but I think she's good. But she's manic she's, and all the stuff. Yeah. She's just big. She's like, I'm going for it. I'm the Laura Dern. But anyways, <laughs> the point is, we're talking about this movie. This is her best role. She's great in this. And some things that I do like about this movie, I do like these depictions of the two different women. Because yeah. to me, it, it is a lot about women and sex, obviously the movie. But like, that's my interpretation is that there's this like sweet, innocent, pretty woman who comes out of the, in the fucking light with like, oh, yeah. beautiful and, shot, and by the way, beautiful shot when she comes out of the blackness. The movie's beautiful. Yeah, I beautiful. like the way it's shot. It's really interesting. I really like the cinematography and I like this fucking weird shit where it's all distorted at the ends and shit's out of focus. And it's just really pretty. And, and we talk about this. I like movies where. It's an artist trying to say something. Yeah, I just find so much of it unpleasant that I'm like, oh, I just want to turn this off. I don't like it. It's fucking wacky. And I hate Dennis Hopper. I, I had a long day and I hate the fucking Eagles. <laughs> well, it's 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 uh, and I want to talk about the good shit in the movie and the sexual shit, which I mean, that's, that's what I started to do. I did. Like, my, my point got derailed. Hold on one second. What? So but the Laura Dern plays this innocent, yeah, yeah, yeah. beautiful. So there's this innocence and you have that attraction. Like in high school, you're like, I want to be with her. She's like a she's virgin. An she's yeah. sweet. She's angelic. She likes me. Then there's this other woman yes. that you were also fascinated by in high school in that age, at any age where you're like, she's just pure sex. She's like fucking hit me. She's naked. She's like a singer. She's got all the makeup. And that is still now as a 40 year old, I think about both women. There's an attraction to yes. both things. And you're like, which one pulls you which way? The Madonna and the whore, you know, it's, a, it's that thing. And uh, I, I also rewatching it. She is so much like, well, so obviously it gets into uh, um, sadism and masochism, right? And, and those urges, you know, would you? I mean, well, how so? What was the plow? <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> I was like, Jesus Christ. Um, but it also feels like she's like the mother to these guys like because they're all like almost like babies around her and then they're like hitting her but she's letting them and then at the they're end calling her mom too they're calling her mom and then at the end when her kid comes up and hugs her he's wearing that propeller hat that kyle mm -hmm. mclaughlin was playing with and it, it, so it gets into the shit you don't want to like it, th that's what's great about david lynch he clearly has his own shit his own demons and kinks he's dealing with but there's there's a lot of shit here about you wanting uh, your mo mother to call you a bad boy and, and then you be, you know beat her up or beat you up and all this shit. It's like pretty uh pretty intense shit, um and it's interesting and I I like yeah the the dynamics between her and Laura Dern are great and uh, the idea of like going into the darkness of sexual perversions is great, but the part where he takes him out on the night on the town, I find it yeah. so pointless. Because like nothing's happening. They're just like, there's no wit. There's and this is the problem with the movie. I think at times it's like I know it's in this weird place where it's not trying to be funny or serious. It's like in the middle ground. But that part where they go around, they're just like saying they're just like scaring him, and it's just right. all lines. And then Dennis Harper's just getting mad over and over and over. Yes, so repetitive, and nothing's really happening. Like they go to that place. I think that's the worst part of the movie. Like they go to that house with um, uh, Dean Stockwell. Yes. Not doing anything. I I agree. There's some interesting things. I mean, I like that this crazy wide angle where there's like seven people standing in a yeah. row. It looks really interesting. And all these things look like sets. They look like 1950s TV shows, which is like yeah. Feels obviously like on purpose. Or like those detective movies before. Naked yeah. Gun. But the same thing. That's when I what I mean, which just gets like unpleasant. I'm like, I think it's just weird to be weird. And I, maybe there's a deeper. I'm going to get so many shit and like, you don't get it. You're a fucking idiot. You're a simpleton. Well, I guess I'm a simpleton. I, I, I don't get it. And it just feels like nothingness. And it feels like he's like, what if there's a lady with a lampshade on her head over here? And then yeah. a fat weirdo over here and then just random dancing. And it's long. And I think Dennis Hopper, when he's watching, you know, the guy from Untouchables sing, um, you know, Roy Orbison. And he's like doing this acting that is like, like we said, it's bad. He's like. 
Like, I, it's just this weird, dumb face acting horse shit you know that I just is. am it's... like, who cares? And then they just get in the car and ride more. Like, I know. We'll drive some more. <laughs> I'm like, oh, great. We're going to drive more. What do they do there? They just went there, got beer. And then, yeah, or like he gave him money and then they just sang a song and then drove more and then and then s- s- did the song again. <laughs> they did the song twice. <laughs> I know. And he's like putting lipstick on and kissing him. I, I'm just like it's also like, OK, you're just looking for something crazy to do right then. You're just like, it, it, you know, what? It, it feels like they let it feels like the director said to Dennis Hopper, Dennis Hopper, just go wild. And it's just the worst feeling seeing Dennis Hopper go wild because he's just He's just a narcissist who thinks he's like the most talented person ever and convinced everyone in the 60s that was the case because they're all fucking high. Yeah, he's just he's just silly to me, frankly. I, yeah. It's just silly. And and there is that chunk from like an hour to like an hour 40 that I'm like, I don't care. I want to I fast forward. And like I said, the first 40 minutes is so fucking good and interesting. And I, like, I love this imagery of the father falling down and spraying the hose and the dog is just yeah. licking looking from the hose i all that stuff is is great and also this thing this the kid the main character there mclaughlin he comes home and like his dad's fucking weird so he's got this weird thing he's gonna look for shit he like there's there's like kids like that that have like fucked up relationship with their parents and they're doing this weird shit and this like intrigue of like going up there and there's all the great symbolism of the bugs and then he's a bug exterminator and you find the underground underbelly thing and I, I started metaphors. reading shit, trying to figure out what's that. A lot of good metaphors forged in the movie. Yeah, good metaphors, whatever. And then I'm like just reading all these essays. And I do like a movie like this where there's just nothing but interpretations. What's this meaning? There's, I read one whole article about like, it's about the Lincoln assassination. <laughs> kind of the Lincoln Street. <laughs> it's on Lincoln Street. And then Booth, <laughs> Booth, Booth, Frank Booth. I mean, I think I think it is. I mean, the movie works like a dream, so it, it does have like it's open to a lot of things. I mean, I feel like on some level, let's talk about what it's try to talk about what it's about. I mean, it seems like to me I think that's what we've been doing. But <laughs> <laughs> well, we've mainly been shitting on it. Let's try to say we'll try to talk about what it's. I mean, it seems like to me that like so. All right, here's this innocent kid, but he has this you know that that dark side he's never really explored. Right, he comes back to town. His dad. His dad gets, you know, a weird heart attack while doing a very dick jizzing thing with the hose. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, and then he he sees the ear on the ground, which is, you know, like, you know, an interesting symbol. Like, you know, like, because you have you see the bugs under the ground, which is like the dark sexual under nature, uh, nature behind shit. And then the ear, like the hearing what's under the ground. Right. And then it seems like Dennis Hopper is almost like. A representation of his own feelings, you know what I mean, like that psychopathic monster within him right and he's trying to sure yeah and then he it, it, then, he becomes that at one point yeah he's trying to deal with it becomes it but then eventually kind of overcomes it when he shoots dennis hopper and then by the end it's like it's back but at the same time there's still this like uneasiness uh you know which is the sexual perversions hidden in society but the problem is with the movie and, and i want to say like i feel like the movie this is closest to is vertigo um because Vertigo also similarly is a detective story about sexual obsession. Mm-hmm. And it's a detective story where there's like the story itself is kind of silly and not the important matter, you know? But the difference is, even though the story in Vertigo might not be like, might be a little silly, they still follow it. This kind of right. like gives up on the story. And I guess my problem is it's like, it, it doesn't care about the story, but then it keeps on showing you plot points of a plot right. it doesn't care about so i just like i don't know it makes me feel like not interested by the end yeah and i'm, I'm just gonna say one more time i really enjoy everything that dennis hopper is not in all yeah, the know. scenes the 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 scenes with uh mclaughlin and and uh, isabel whatever the fuck her name is are great and this and and um and, and laura dern yeah. uh, all that stuff is fantastic it's just the weird underbelly thing and, I, and again i i i guess i'm i'm probably wrong i just don't get it i'm not a no, smart guy i'm I mean, not a smart should, man they should have got in jack nicholson you know they should have got in someone i don't know jack nicholson or someone who's just a little more uh who has more range you know he's just annoying um, and then it, and then it's, it's it's tough to watch you know there is a great joke that's similar to big lebowski there's a couple things that remind me of big lebowski in this um but it's also in the first 40 minutes that's fucking hilarious. Or maybe it's 45. 
I, I LOL both times when she it. sees it. Laura Dern sees him and goes, how'd it go? And he goes, it went OK. <laughs> it's hilarious. It's the same joke from Big Lebowski when he's like, yeah. oh, how'd that go? And he's like, it went great. Dude's car got a little dinged up. I mean, it, it's genuinely funny. Like he watched this woman get fucking brutally raped. He got like fired at that <laughs> knife point. And then she's like, how'd it go? And he's like, it went OK. You're like, OK, there we go. More of that. Give me some more of that. Action. There's also that they have their own little sideways line with Dennis Hopper, their own Merlot line. Fuck Heineken. Give me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ribbon. But that's also like the way, the way he delivers it stinks, though. He's, he's just screaming Paps Blue Ribbon. I don't get it over and Oh, it's the same note over and over and over and over again. It's, it's awful. Yeah. I mean, it's is it possible that if they just had someone else, this would just be like an amazing movie? I think it would be much better. I literally have the line right here. I love this movie until Dennis Hopper shows up. Um, and there's things I love. I mean, again, like the scene, in the closet. I love when she discovers him and that yeah. and that fucking weird shot where she's framed in his like arm triangle is just like beautiful and it's like hot. I'm like, that's so, like my fantasy dude, when, when, when she's she like strips stripped him, down. That's all I want. I want some woman to just strip me. <laughs> me too. <laughs> just strip me and yell at me and beat me. Oh, man, that part's fucking hot as shit. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. And I mean, I've already like said so many of the things. By the way, the opening reminds me of The Godfather, too. He's got the hat on. He's in the garden. He falls. The little kid comes out. Sees oh, him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very yeah. similar. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm like, I don't even know what else to say. I, I, I'm i like, my parents owned this movie when I was a kid, which is really unsettling to me. I don't understand. And I tried watching it with my cousin once, and I was like, I can't do it. And I feel similarly to when I watched it when I was 11. I'm like, I don't know what this is. This is freaky. I know. And it's like, it, it's the kind of thing where it's like, because it's so open for interpretation, you don't want to say you don't like it because you're like, ah, maybe I'm just missing it completely. You know what I mean? It's that kind of movie that, yeah, you, you, you want to get because you either get or you don't. You know what I mean? And so you want to mm -hmm. be on the getting side. But I do think like, I do think there are real flaws. I, and it's hard to like criticize a movie like this because it's clearly like campy and it's clearly like a dream. So it's not like you can't criticize the plot because it's like not, it's clearly not caring about the plot. But you can criticize Dennis Hopper. <laughs> so right. like, there is a flaw in this movie in the sense that like Dennis Hopper and he, he takes over the movie. So I, I found myself kind of zoning out a lot in the second half. Like, yeah, I tried to watch it a second time and I couldn't. I literally went outside. I was like, I was like, let me watch it a second time because this feels like a movie you do have to watch multiple times and really get in. And I'm that way anyway with any movie. Yeah, I'm like that right. with fucking, uh, you know, Mighty Ducks. I got to watch it three times to really fully <laughs> emerge. And I think any movies like that, if you want to really dive into a yeah, of course, movie, of course. Yeah. Um, but also, I've realized this, too. I'm like reading reviews and stuff. I just am not a good movie critic. As you said, it's an art to articulate how you feel about a movie. I have no ability to do so. I just can't do it. I'm not a movie critic. I'm not a writer. It. I'm not a smart guy. You have you have clues. Instead of saying you hated Dennis Hopper, you said, I love the first 42 minutes and 33 seconds. And then I was like, that's right when Dennis Hopper comes in. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> um, but so I'm not good at it, but also no, there is things, at it. there is things that I do like. Like I said, like to me, it is this thing. And I, and I found this um, quote because I've been reading all about it. But David Lynch said something about he's like, you know, can you be happy knowing that there are people in our country that are addicted to heroin and they're murdering to keep their addiction going? Like wow. there is this thing of like, I think a lot of this movie is because you have all these 1950s imagery of yes. like the American dream, white picket fence. And all this stuff. And like, meanwhile, we're all just ignoring the fact that like there's crazy meth addicted people. People are getting raped. There's, you know, crime. So that is a big part of this movie. And I'm interested in that. I like that. I like the idea that like my wife's going to come home. I'm going to give her a kiss on the lips. We're going to talk about comedy and we'll snuggle up and watch fucking Seinfeld. And meanwhile, but meanwhile, like, yeah. so within within 100 yards of us, somebody is shooting heroin into their asshole and hasn't seen their baby. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, and that that's a really moving part with emotion in the movie when he's in the car with Lord Dern. And he's like, how can there be people like Frank in the world? And right. That's such a great part, because it's like. He's he's recognizing for the first time there is this like he's getting out of the Garden of Eden, losing his innocence. He's recognizing there's this evil in the world and that the evil uh, is someone who's committed to the sexual perversions he kind of feels in himself, you know, but the evil is someone who like carries those all the way to the end, you know, so it's not just that you recognize evil, but recognize the similarities between you and evil men that you, you know, have, you know, those needs are, uh, there's overlap. 
you know. Well, and also he's discovering Frank because he decided to look closer, which, by the way, American Beauty is obviously paying some homage or trying to do what yeah. this movie did. Even as, as much as I don't love this movie, it's just it's still a million times better than American Beauty, obviously. Oh, for sure. Yeah. But he decided to look. I mean, that's another yeah. thing is like if you want to look at what else is going on in our country, in your town, at the darker side, you're in danger. You're going to be brought into this world and you're not going to be the same anymore. And that's another big part of this movie. It feels like this idea of like, well, I'm interested in this. Let me go across. And he's told not to cross Lincoln Street or whatever. And he goes across and then his fucking life becomes this crazy hell. And he can't go back. He's not Which, the same. Yeah. And it, it's also it, it's very Hitchcock. It has that voyeurism in rear window and vertigo that you feel, you know, when he's in the closet. I mean, it is like there is like really awesome shit. The thing is like, and I was trying to think about this because like, there's something about David Lynch's sensibility where it's like, I don't fully connect to the sense that like, he's like, look at everyone's really repressed and polite and weird, you know, but deep down there's crazy shit going on. And I'm like, that doesn't feel my, like my life ever. Like maybe it's a Jewish thing. I just feel like I just, I see the world as everyone's pretty, a lot of fucked up shit on the open. You know what I mean? I guess maybe it's a waspy, like repressed kind of culture that it can connect to more. Do you, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I, I, Jesus, fuck. <laughs> um, it's a hoax. It's a hoax. No, I guess. <laughs> Oof. Uh, I guess I see what you mean. Um, I lost my train of thought because I started thinking about COVID well, and it, Trump. It, I and think hope. it connects to that like wasp repressed, like, you know, a family that doesn't talk about anything, but there's like sexual things underneath, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, my family's far from wasp, but we never talked about anything either. <laughs> I mean, we fucking I jacked off in front of my uh, dad when I was 12. And no. anyway, um, yeah, but but it's also but obviously everyone feels that way on some level, like that sexual repression. And it's also like deals, I think, with movies like the sexual repression in movies, how like movies like from the 50s, like or any movies don't deal with these darker things. You know, and this movie, this movie kind of deals with darker things within the feel of the kind of movies that don't deal with darker things, you know, which is interesting. Yeah, no, I mean, like I said, de definitely interesting and a lot of pretty stuff. And there's moments too, like I have this with movies sometimes where I'm like, I fucking hate this. Yeah. And then like a moment later, I'm like, I really like this though. I know. And it is, again, it's the scenes with Hopper and the scenes that feel just, I, I here's the thing, I'm never really into weird just to fucking be weird and i know it's not just to be weird i know he is saying something but like this idea of like there's a lady with a fucking you know a blanket over her head and a fat lady with weird glasses and a guy singing and like and people I, are in the back doing weird shit i just, shit. I just out of this room. <laughs> i'm just not into it i've had this discussion with people when collaborating before where it's like well just what if this and then you're like well why and they're like i don't know it's just fucking crazy and i'm like what yeah i know i feel like you gotta have some kind of reason i mean yeah i hate to do it. let's just do it to do it i mean but there's a lot of stuff in this movie that works on that level or or maybe it's like not crazy for crazy sake but really it's imagery that like is haunting you know but then i think it's more of the dennis hopper shit that's just like feels like it's always just with Dennis Hopper where it feels like crazy for crazy's sake, you know? Yeah, I, I agree. Sorry, I'm erasing stuff so we can have this because <laughs> otherwise my computer is full. Um, yeah, no, it, it does. It just feels like it. Get it. It's kooky, man. Like I, for me and I, I, I could be wrong, but I just can feel like David Lynch in a room talking to his, you know, his uh, cinematographer being like this just because, man, just fucking make it weird. But, uh, but maybe not. I don't know that much about David Lynch. I'm not a huge David I'm Lynch curious, guy. Because it's like, it's like he probably. I mean, like it's it is weird. It's like what is he like? The people who are like that are like, let me just put something weird. But you all, I mean, he obviously knows intellectually that this is about sexual perversion in society. So he obviously like can be open about his ideas, right? I mean, it's not like he just the symbolism is pretty overt at times. It's not like he can just be like, I have no idea what it means because it's pretty clear. You know, so he must be able to articulate it. Well, certainly he's smarter than I am, but I just think I think sometimes. People like I I don't know, again, I'm not good at fucking articulating and I wish I was a smarter person, but like there's times where I'm like. Is that genius or are you just doing a fucking weird thing right now? I don't right, know. Right. I had another and, point and I lost my and train then people, of thought. But people ah, really I'm people stupid. Re 
people really connect to this movie because they like they love like, it. They like weird shit. They like they they want something that they haven't seen before. And this is that. And uh we're we're like realists. We want like something real. Yes. And that's the all, problem. But other people want they want to see something they've never seen. And I get that. I totally get that. I I, I connect to that that feeling. I just like it's just not my you know, I I like things that are funny, like actually funny, not like this is like funny, but you're not even supposed to know when or where or if it's an accident or per- on purpose. <laughs> like <laughs> You know, this is and again, I'm like, maybe I, I suck, but I'm like, I want to like fight people that are like and we have this. We've had conversations like this, but people are like, this be like, this is my favorite movie. I'm like, you saw Goodfellas and you like this better. <laughs> this is better than the Silence of the Lambs. This is better than a fucking Rear Window. It's better than Casablanca. It's better than Sideways. But I, you I, like this better than Brokeback. But I don't want to be that kid like, because you you mentioned and, and I don't want to be this guy who only wants every movie to be like the movie I like because all those movies are like a concrete reality, you know? Yes. You know, and I don't you know, I don't want every movie to be that. I think it's good to have weird dreamlike movies that like have their oh, own. What about Blues Brothers? I love Blues Brothers. That's yeah. not concrete and real. That's fucking wacky and over the top and silly. You hate it because it's made by uh, Landis, who's a Nazi or whatever the fuck you think. <laughs> what? Um, oh, John I, uh, Hughes is the one who yeah, is a, whatever. Um, but uh, there's like two jokes in that movie. But whatever. You just you don't like there's that a movie. million you like your there's child. a million jokes you like your childhood. That's what you like. Um, but no, there's so, like a thousand jokes. But so. Yeah, I interrupted I, you. I'm sorry. Well, I'm just saying, like, we we like movies with, like, a concrete reality that are, like, and this movie's not. This movie follows, like, the logic of dreams. But I guess, uh, I guess the p- problem is if Dennis Hopper's in your dream, it's a it's a bad dream. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's all it is. Is Dennis I, I think, yeah. I don't yeah, know. I it's don't. Interesting. Kyle MacLachlan's great. He's interesting. And Laura Dern He's fantastic. Great. Laura Dern's fantastic. And Isabel Mozabubulu is fantastic. Isabel Rosalina is amazing. The chief of police is good. It looks like he maybe fucked his daughter when they were younger. It seems like, I don't know, there's some weird shit going on there. Um, the visuals are great. The music visuals. is great. Maybe it's just Dennis Hopper. And I have a feeling like Dennis Hopper, I think when he comes in, he just takes charge probably. Like D- David Lynch probably had his own idea. Dennis Hopper's like, I'm going to go in and do, he probably was on nitrous oxide. I'm going to go in and do this. And he just like took control. And David Lynch is like, all right, maybe I'll collaborate. And I, I, he just he just ruins everything, you know? Yeah, and it's making it seem like we hate this movie. I actually We hate don't. Dennis Hopper. I hate Dennis Hopper. I hate his scenes. And there's a lot I really enjoy about this movie, including the first 40 minutes, which is not nothing. That's like almost half That's the movie. That's a big part, I'm, yeah. I'm literally like, this is like one of the best movies I've ever seen. But that's um, the problem. It's like, it's that 40 minutes, but Dennis Hopper's kind of like, that's where the genie in Aladdin comes in. You know what I mean? 40 minutes in, that's where the you're going down the rabbit hole, and that's when you see the crazy guy who carries the rest of the movie. So that's the big crucial moment where like, oh, he's coming in now, the guy, the force that's going to push us into this next act, and he just sucks. So it just kind of like falls apart right then. Yeah, and literally throughout the, the second half of the movie, too, when he's not there and it's back to Kyle McLaughlin, I'm like, this is great. This is yeah. intense. This is interesting when they're at the fucking diner. And again, there's all these weird angles and stuff. I do like a lot of this movie and we might have to do a retrospective, maybe fucking eight months from now. I'll watch it a third time in the right mood and the right lighting and be like, holy shit, this is fantastic. But I just don't know how I can overcome this Dennis Hopper screaming. Also, the end. Yeah, the end. I mean, it's kind of creepy where that guy's shop and he's just standing there. That's I mean, that is creepy. Um, it is creepy and it's fun and he, his fucking arm goes flying it's like up and shit. Bizarre. It's fucking but weird. Yeah. This hopper comes in. He's like, you know, I have a police radio and it's just like, I know uh, it's, you know what he is. He's, it's just like, it's, it's literally, he's an example acting teacher should use about what bad acting is. It's like, don't do any of these things. Don't just hit the same note every single moment. Don't just keep on yelling. Try to show a different range. Don't just do heavy lifting. Like, like, you know, force it, you know, like he's just an example of bad acting. He's like Michael Scott in the improv class. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Scott. I mean, I, I, Steve Carell might be the funniest guy. I think he's like underrated. Like really? Steve Carell should be up there with like Eddie Murphy, Chris Farley, Jim Carrey when he was good. All these guys got <laughs> shitty except for Farley who died. Everyone. But, yeah. I guess if you die, is the only way you get out of it. I'm watching like office rerun. Steve Carell, every second he's on, he's unbelievably funny. He might yeah. be the funniest person. I mean, yeah, but I think people realize that. 
No one's like, no one's I like, guess so. <laughs> I'm talking about funny ass. No one says funny he's ass. not funny. I'm yeah. saying like the funny ass person, well, like you know above fucking Groucho and all these he other people. Needs, he needs one other thing because he really was the best in the office. He needs like a second thing. Well, he's I, going for the Oscar. He's doing the fucking thing where you he try went to get to the, the Oscar. Oscar too quickly. I feel like he could have done another like some great comedy shit. But, you know, it's like 12 seasons of The Office. So that took up most of his life. But like, right. uh, because like there was like, you know, he's not really that funny in other movies like 40 year old virgin. I don't know. That, that movie's not that funny to me. Um, and he's pretty not, great. Is it? Well, there's there's the fucking Judd Apatow fat on it with his like 75 minutes yeah. of like learning a lesson or whatever. But the first half is very funny. By the way, I, 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 all I can think about every time we do this podcast is like literally I have a feature film coming out and I'm the lead actor. Yeah. And it's just me being like, Dennis Hopper is a piece of shit. He doesn't know how to act. You're a better actor than Dennis Hopper. I know that sounds, I mean, it, it sounds crazy, but it's not. It's just true. Like, you have range in that movie. You're not like, when you have anxiety in that movie, you, you know, you, you, you I'm scared. You tense up. Yeah, you're not like, I'm having a panic attack. <laughs> you're not like, <laughs> like, you know what it is with Dennis Hopper? There's nothing internal. It's just all like, you know. <laughs> um, that it's is like, it's exactly it. I mean, the scene, I, I watched it right before this when that when fucking Untouchables guy is singing. I mean, Dennis Hopper is like, <laughs> he's like biting his lips. It's just terrible. His acting it's is terrible. just him on drugs. I mean, that's his acting. Like there's method and, and other types. And there's meth. And then he's mad. <laughs> uh, no, it's bad. But thank you for the compliment. I'm better than him and Robert Redford. And uh, I don't know about Robert Redford, but you know, yeah, that, that is we gotta, I, I mean, I, I got to get you on board with the Robert Redford is not good. Who else thinks that Colin Quinn or who? Colin Quinn, Louis C.K., Nick DiPaolo, Joe List. We have a little club. I mean, I don't Louis's view of actors is like I don't think Louis likes one actor who's even remotely like good looking. I know his favorite actor is like <laughs> fucking <laughs> fucking elephant man. <laughs> <laughs> he's like Steve Buscemi is the only good American yeah, actor. He's like, um, he's like Leo sucks. Brad Pitt sucks. I'm like, I don't know. Um, he's like Tom Cruise blows. But no, I, Robert Redford, it's not that he's bad. Dude, first of all, watch. If you want to see bad, watch the movie Lost at Sea or uh, My Boat, whatever it's called. <laughs> Robert Redford on a boat. You all can't believe lost. how bad it is. It's really is bad. Lost. I heard it's great. He, how bad he is. No, the oh. movie's not good. He is well, there's no really way bad. He's bad and the movie's good because it's just him on a boat, right? Right. But like Newman, you compare my, my the thing with Robert Redford and I've done the speech everywhere, but when compared to these other iconic great actors, he's nowhere near Paul Newman or Jack of Nicholson course. or Al Pacino or Robert De Niro. And he's in this like Mount right. He's just a star. He's similar to George Clooney. George Clooney is better than Robert Redford. Robert Redford is OK at best. He's in great movies, some great scripts. Yeah, I mean, he's I mean, like to me, he's in like the Warren Beatty category. Who Warren Beatty is also great. But he's like a good looking actor, you know, traditionally mm -hmm. good looking. But he's a great actor, Warren Beatty. But Robert Redford is, I guess you're right. I'm trying to think of a great Robert Redford performance. You can't. Yeah, you. we could sit here all day. I can't even think of what movies is he in. I can't even. Oh, All the President's Men. There's All the President's Men, The Sting, uh, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, which are great movies. But uh, Newman carries his ass. Yeah, I guess you're right. I think he's good in All the President's Men. No, he's good. He's fine. Yeah, he's always fine. He's OK. Yeah, exactly. He's OK. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, OK, he's like a fucking huge movie star who's like, hey, it's OK. And then in some of the stuff, he's bad. But George Clooney is more than OK, I think. No, George Clooney's good. I like George. I mean, George Clooney, we're going to be friends. This movie's going to come out. He's going to call me. We're both we're both, you know, yucksters and having fun. He's going to put dog shit on my doorstep or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be great. Um, I like George Clooney. I love him. I love every actor. Every actor is great. We're all in it together as actors. You know, it's like we're deep thinkers. Who are the actors that you're like, like on the level of Dennis Hopper and Robert Emperor, where you're like, I just don't get it. Kevin Spacey uh, sometimes goes on that, goes on that. Sometimes I'm like, I don't think Kevin Spacey is good. But sometimes yeah, he is, but sometimes he's not. There's times where he's not great. Uh, God, I always have these. I should write them all down because there's a lot of times where I'm watching someone. And I'm like, wait, what? I mean, Hopper's number one. Yeah, I um, would agree with that. 
trying to think who else is just like, it's like, uh, well, here's one. I mean, this is, you're going to hate me for this, but I really do believe this. And I love sideways. I think Paul Giamatti outside of sideways sucks. I think he's always bad and over the top. Wow. I mean, that's bold. He's not as good as Philip Seymour Hoffman. That's for sure. You know what movie I love? Ides of March. Did you watch that movie? I love that movie. movie. That's a fun movie. Yeah. I think it's fantastic. Well, I love politics and I love the sport of politics. And I love Philip Seymour Hoffman. I like Maris Tomei and I like Jim. I think Giamatti's great in it's that. It's a fun little like uh, political thriller. Political thrillers I- are always fun. That's a good genre. Yeah, I love I love thrillers and I love politics and I love I love Ryan Gosling, too. I think he's fantastic. Yeah, he's another one who I'm like, sometimes I'm like, he's the best actor ever. And the other time I'm like, you're going full retard. Like, it's like, I don't. <laughs> like, oh, we almost made it through a whole episode. I'm saying, <laughs> well, he's going for it. And it's not even asked for in the script. <laughs> <laughs> like a regular person. He's playing it retarded. Um, oh, Charlie Sheen. He stinks. Yeah. Although he's he amazing in Major good. League. He was never. Yeah. Good. He's no, amazing no. in Major League, though. Give me another great Paul Giamatti performance. I feel like it, on billions, he's like ridiculous. Well, I've never seen that show. And I think that show, it's TV TV. You can't judge actors from TV because right. TV is a different thing. It sucks. It's whatever. Um, Giamatti, American Splendor. Yeah, he's good at that. He's fantastic. Yeah. Sideways. He's amazing he's in amazing sideways. sideways. He should have won the fucking Academy Award. John and I'm Adam. a believer. What? I'm a believer. If you have one great performance, you're a good actor. Like Kevin Costner, people shoot on Kevin Costner. I'm like, Kevin Costner is unbelievably good in JFK, Field of Dreams, Bull Durham. You don't, you know, we don't need to fucking and Untouchables. He's great. People, I mean, that's yeah. another one. Louis hates Kevin Costner. He thinks I mean, he's I don't, like see, the I don't see how you could say like Robert Redford. I mean, I feel like Robert Redford and Kevin Costner are like the same. I mean, Kevin Costner's no, a little You're incorrect. Better. Um, Kevin Costner is way better, way better. I'm a Kevin Costner ride, ride till I die guy. Well, you do get, you do have Bull Durham. It's Bull Durham, he's amazing. Field of Dreams, he's so good. There's beautiful depth in it. I know you think yeah, it's like right. a conservative right wing Nazi movie, and he's well, he, JFK. He's unbelievably good. I know you hate that movie. He too. has a, <laughs> he has a wit to him. You know, like he's witty. Like he kind of has like a fun. Like Robert Redford doesn't have that. He's great. Redford, Costner's you know, great. I love Redford, Costner. You know and he's what Robert funny. Redford is? He's a dull. He is dull. He That's stinks. the perfect word. He's dull. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know who's bad? Except for Godfather, James Caan. I mean, he's pretty great in The Godfather. Yeah, but you I mean, he's perfect the in The Godfather. But you take out The Godfather. You see Elf? He looks like he's about to fall asleep at Elf. <laughs> I love Elf. <laughs> Elf is like not even trying. He's great. He's like a great straight God, man. Brother. I mean, yeah, you can't bring fucking Christmas comedies into this. <laughs> He's it's silly. He's playing like a straight man dad. It's about an elf. Yeah. Uh, but I think he's fantastic. Gene Hackman I mean, is I, the I, best actor of all time. Gene Hackman's awesome. And awesome. He's, he's the best. John, John Cazale also just you can't even believe how fucking good he is. Yeah, he did it right, man. Five classics and then five, five and, and dead. Died. Five and dead. <laughs> That's a good name for a band or podcast. Was that really, the only five movies he did. Or... He was in five movies, and they were all nominated for Best Picture. And then he died. And then he died. Yeah. It's good. Uh, good move. Yeah. No, he is. He's uh... amazing. And but, well, he's he's one of those guys. Like he's a hundred percenter. Hundred percent of his movies are great. Yeah, I guess. I guess if you die early, that's that's. Uh, well, even time. if you die early, it's not like fucking uh, River Phoenix. All his movies are perfect. Yeah, I guess does Heath Ledger. I guess Heath Ledger has some clunkers in there. I imagine. I don't know. I only saw Heath Ledger in two movies: fucking Batman and Brokeback. <laughs> two greatest performances, like that. Yeah. <laughs> and I, oh, the Patriot. I saw the Patriot, but I didn't give a shit. That was whatever. Monsters Ball, which he's very good into. He's in Monsters Ball. Yeah, he's Billy Bob Thornton's son. Did you like that movie? No shit. I mean, I haven't seen it since it came out. I, I liked the, that one scene very much. <laughs> I remember loving it. But I think like I think if I watch it now, it is a little like there's a lot of coincidences in there. Like I don't even remember that well level coincidences. I just remember that people did bit. Someone did a bit about it. I think we talked about it before. It's like yeah, we talked about it on here. It's just like, oh, Billy Bob Thornton overcame his racism by fucking Halle Berry. <laughs> <laughs> just like hilarious. But I'm pretty sure like Billy Bob Thornton accidentally runs over or no, no, helps Halle Berry after her son gets run over. As a coincidence, Billy Bob Thornton just happened to electrocute, be the guy who electrocuted her husband. I don't know. It's just like, uh, but you know. Um, I just thought of, I just thought of one to bring up. Actor? That, 
Yeah, and I don't know. I don't. I'm, I'm afraid. I'm gonna like. I don't want right. to put my feet on the edge. I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna put it in question four. I think four. we're pissing everyone off with this. Shit. I'm, yeah, this is gonna be an upsetting show. This is just a question. Uh huh. Is Bill Paxton great? Okay, so Bill Paxton. Great in is, Apollo 13. Bill Paxton is is uh, legitimately bad in movies. <laughs> Some movie like just like bad, but he he's a he's a he's a he has that Nicolas Cage thing. Where if he goes comedic, he can be really fun, you know. But he, if he does serious, a lot of times it can be really bad. There's some Bill Paxton that I'm like, what? This is terrible. I love him in Apollo 13, but he's also he's he's next to like. Yeah, I mean, first of all, I think it's a great script, carried. but he's with Hanks and Kevin Bacon. <laughs> yeah, and so <laughs> he's being carried. He's being. Uh, he's not just being carried by uh, a lack of gravity in there. It's uh, you got two great actors in that. Uh, yeah, no, Bill Paxton, I mean, he's better than Bill Pullman. Yeah, yeah. Bill Paxton is is not great, but can be good in some movies. You know, yes. if he's like he's great in the true lies of that like used car salesman. He can be good when he's comedic. It's the same thing with Nicolas Cage. Nicolas Cage is good if he's playing weird, but if he's playing right. real, it's like awful. Yeah. You know, what yeah, I mean? not a big some people Cage can't guy. play real, you know. Um, it's gonna be so weird when I'm at the Academy Awards next year and seeing all these people. <laughs> uh, yeah, I want to thank Ron on Hirschberg first and foremost, and uh, and that's I'll it. The first thanks that'd be awesome. Yeah, first and only. <laughs> um, we got so, we're working on a, on a premiere, by the way. It's not in ink yet, but we got what's coming. I better get that uh, invite. Oh yeah. Yeah, um, be there, but it'll be like the seventh time you've seen the fucking movie, though. Maybe, maybe you will get down. I mean, you know, he won a Grammy. Maybe they'll, they'll do an Oscar next. I think so. <laughs> I think maybe. so. I got to work on buttoning my jacket when I stand up. All right. You have a line if you accept your wait. What are you accepting it for? Best actor or best writer? best screenplay? Probably actor. <laughs> I'll get the nom, but I'm not going to win. They'd like to give it to someone who's been around. But screenplay will probably get it. But Louis will take up the whole fucking acceptance <laughs> speech. He's not letting me talk. <laughs> He'll be up there telling us about some movie from 1936. Do you have, I mean, we, what would your opening line be? We all know you've thought about it. So just say what it would be. I, I haven't thought about it, but um, <laughs> boy, but we have, we talked about it. Like the idea of like, you know, the, the, you have that fantasy when you're like shooting a movie that like the music comes up to like Louis CK and Joe Lynn. You're like, this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> It is funny because you got to like pretend you're shocked, which is weird because it's like one out of four. It's not that crazy odds, but they're always like, how, how did I win? I'm just right. one of the four. Well, it's, first of all, it's five or whatever. But, it's still not like insane that they won, but they always act like it's like just insane, like a lottery. No, some of them act like that. And it's like everybody knew they were going to win. There's certain <laughs> favorites and then you got to get it. And you're like, thank you very much. I appreciate this, <laughs> man. I bet when Will Smith won, they were like, I bet everyone in that room was like, please don't have Will Smith win. This is just going to be so awkward, you know? Well, everyone knew he was going to win. He was going to win the whole time. Who else was even nominated? The the, the dog and power of dog? Who else was I think there? Denz Denzel was nominated. Cumberbatch, uh, Cumberbatch. Come on His Back, Come was his nominated. Back. Oh, he's someone I'm not crazy about. Yeah, I've only seen him in a little bit. But I said that in that movie, Power of the Dog. I'm like, I, there's moments in that movie where I'm like, I think this guy might suck right now. <laughs> I think I acted it out. If I was on Bangton, he's like, I have you. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm all, all. I completely agree with Sam Elliott on that movie, which I haven't seen. <laughs> Most of what Sam Elliott said was okay. He said, he said, uh, he said, like she clearly. First of all, he said she's a great director. Obviously, I love her other stuff. And then he was like, she just doesn't know anything about the West. The, that guy's in his chaps the whole time. He never comes out of his chaps. And I don't know what chaps are, but I, I think it's probably accurate what he's saying. You know. Sure. The problem is he also goes, and then there's this suggestion of homosexuality. And just the way he says it, it's just not good. <laughs> right. Well, I, I didn't listen to what he said, but I do think the kid in the movie who is good and he was nominated. Did you, you haven't watched the movie? I haven't watched it, but I have an opinion. He looks and feels like he is from 2021. That was one of my issues. Like I think it's a good shit. performance, but he feels like <laughs> he just feels like a, a millennial or Gen Z, whatever the fuck. He just what? looks and feels like he doesn't feel like he's a kid 
from Wyoming in 1921. Well, that's, you know, that's how I feel about Ben Affleck in The Last Duel. That he could only go to a modern day hair salon to get that look. That's like <laughs> right. a bleach blonde hair. Like you can't get right. that in in the Middle Ages. You can't be like bleach. <laughs> Bleach my hair and give me the crew cut. With He's like, you know, sword? Kurt Cobain, that one when he <laughs> shaved his head, kind of. Yeah. Well, you can't do that with a sword. And it, it also, a big problem in Game of Thrones. I don't know if you ever saw that. Never. But no, those I women can't. had like perfectly trimmed bushes. How? Right. You need an electric razor for that, don't you? I always wondered that it was like uh, Braveheart, like they battle at like uh, Falkirk and you're like, who mowed the lawn? Why is the <laughs> how the grass gets so perfect? It's like a perfect a they're, they're on a football field. <laughs> There's like a goalpost in the background. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, I know. It is weird. Yeah, I, I feel like if you're doing a period piece, the bushes got to be bushy. Yeah, bananas. Just wild. You, you can't you can't do like, like Game of Thrones are like fucking 2012 uh, trimmed perfectly you know it's just like a little it's like what did you do that with fucking dragon teeth there's no way 2012 was a good year for bushes you're right i'm i mean i i remember when bushes back in my day i mean your day too bushes were like big yeah and then they'd they, like, like stick out of a bathing suit like yeah. it'd be like like i i don't even like i don't know there was no like bald back in my day no not happened. in my house either. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We got to wrap this right, up. Yeah, this is fun. Up. I think this yeah. is a good one. We went off the rails, but uh, yeah, we Dennis Hopper stinks. David Lynch is cool. And uh, uh, my father's gay. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. Well, uh, thanks for listening. And you got any plugs? We always just come apart at the end. Yes. I have yeah. a huge plug. The biggest plug of all the plugs, but plugs <laughs> this Friday. By the way, have you read any Alan Watts? I'm still stuck in here. Listening to this Alan Watts. DNA book. guy. What? DNA guy. Yeah, that's him. Um, you're the G-A-Y guy. How about that? Uh, this Friday on this very channel, 9.30 p.m. Eastern. Whoa. People keep asking, uh, uh, p.m. People keep asking, like, a.m. or p.m. Like, my, my special is going to debut at 9.30 a.m. <laughs> on a work day. <laughs> 9.30 p.m. Watch it live. That gets the algorithm going. We'll all be watching. We're going to have the, well, I'll have the, uh, the chat going. Be there, 9.30 p.m. Eastern, 6.30 Pacific. Fucking, you know, uh, 3.30 in the morning, London, whatever, 2.30. Get there. Watch it. It's called This Year's Material. It'll be on this YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe right now, this Friday. Big deal. Tell everybody you know. Have a watch party. Watch it a couple times. Get those likes up. Algorithm, comment, like, share. So good. The fucking, uh, the, the, I mean, I saw it taping. It was great. But then the, that that uh, clip of the roller coaster is such a great bit. Oh, thank you. Appreciate um, it. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be great. You gotta watch it. Um, and get ticket for Ronan's taping. Ronan's taping is special soon. A couple <laughs> what is it? Tuesday. <laughs> My special will be premiering. How long did your stay? Yours took uh Well, it took like a month, but I, I was waiting because um I wanted to develop an act before I released my act. Oh, so it actually only took a month? Okay, yeah. It I didn't take gonna, long. I think I'm gonna have my did you use mostly one show? I don't even know, dude. I, I had editors. They edit it. I can't even watch. It. I still haven't seen it. I'm going to watch it with everybody else. I'm like, oh. yeah, it's good. Just fucking put it out. So it probably sucks. I don't know. <laughs> well, all right. Um, all right. Well, cool. Well, uh, yeah, my special. But subscribe to my YouTube channel. You've already subscribed to Joe's because you're watching this. Subscribe to my channel because my, my special is going to be coming out in a, in, a, in a month or two. And, uh, you know, I need people to watch it. Yeah, we're going to go crazy. We'll plug the hell all out right. of that thing. I'll be dead by then. All right. Yep. All, all right. right. This is great. Cut. Cut.